So the point of this video is corrections, market corrections. And we have this, these themes, you know, debt overhang, deflation, we can't grow out of it, negative interest rates. Now that, you know, I think it's pretty solidified that, that Europe is following Japan's lead, the United States will not, and I'm going to touch on that in a second, and then the currency war. But when you look at the market corrections, if we go back to the first correction in 2000, what was the cause and effect? Well, it was the internet and it was the hedge funds that got in real problems in 2000. And how were they bailed out? Who were the bailouts? Well, they were bailed out by the Wall Street firms and the Wall Street banks. Then in 2008, what was the cause and effect? Well, it's these exact same Wall Street and banks. So it was Wall Street and the banks cratered. Lehman going under and a bunch of other lending institutions. Who bailed them out? Well, the Federal Reserve did. Now, as we move forward to the next correction, right? We're seven plus years into this. And the cause and effect is if the Federal Reserve, because they are overextended, right? They are overcapitalized on their balance sheet. Insolvency, just so you understand, insolvency is considered 17 to 1 when your debt is 17 to 1 capitalization. That is insolvency. The Federal Reserve is at 25 to 1, meaning their balance sheet is so underwater that there is no way to reverse out of that. And they're looking to add more. So if the Federal Reserve fails in the next market correction, who is the bailout? Well, this is where it goes to the international community. I'll just say the IMF because I'm sure they're going to be the major player to International Monetary Fund. So why am I so adamant about this connection, right, this movement? Well, the pattern's there. Just like I talked about the pattern up here, the 1929 and 2008, the 1929 correction, we saw, saw it. I showed you this in the video. The, the pin was inserted into the balloon to move money from where? From the U.S. over to Europe and England, right? That's what it was a wealth transfer. That's what the 1929 correction was all about. So if we have this worldwide, you know, let's just not focus on the debt overhang, just the United States, but the worldwide debt overhang. If Let me ask you this question. If you needed a transfusion and you had a choice between getting a transfusion from a healthy patient or a sick patient which one would you choose you would obviously choose the healthy patient so who's the only healthy player in the world economy us the united states so what are some possible pins in the the balloon scenarios for a next correction well one can be the oil debt, massive bankruptcies that just finally tip things over. And we're not just talking about U.S. frackers, but also the, the Canadian oil sand companies. They're, it's the same thing. So we have $550 billion of high-risk debt that was issued over the last 10 years to support this industry that is now failing when oil is below $55. And I've talked plenty about that. I know oil used to be at 90, but everything was repriced by these oil frackers saying they could survive at 55. Now that oil is 30, you know, sub 30 sometimes, the math doesn't work. And this is this this rooster is going to come home to roost. This is going to happen. This money is going to go into default. Another one. China simply stops their purchase of what? Of our treasuries. I wrote in the last alert that China was at $4 trillion in their holdings of U.S. Treasuries. And that is down. We are down there now below three. So they are shedding this. They're shedding this for a lot of reasons. And I won't go into it now just for time. But China can just simply say one day, you know what? We're good. We're good. We're not buying anymore. Another possible pin is war. And war could be a lot of different dimensions. This could be aggressive postures from Russia. This could be the Middle East escalating. This could be terror, some terrorists, whether it's here or somewhere else in the world. And it also could be cyber. Now, 
Look at these three situations here. Oil, debt, China stops buying what? What is a treasury? It's debt. And then war, and I showed you this, how critical war is by the money families in history. It's war is always paid for by what? It's always paid for out of debt. So this theme, it just keeps coming over and over. Debt, debt, debt. You come back to these major themes that we have. It's debt overhang. And I believe a repeat of a 2008 correction is unavoidable. I think it's going to be worse than 2008 because of the debt overhang created, not just the United States, but in the world from the 2008 crisis. Ultimately, at, at the end of this spectrum of themes, it's about a currency war. The last two videos we're going to cover are on 8 and 9. We're going to really dive into this currency war. I'll end this video here, and I'll look forward to wrapping it up with videos 8 and 9 shortly. Thanks for watching.